हेलो एवरीवन कैन यू हेयर मी गुड मॉर्निंग रोशन यस गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग हाउ आर यू और गुड आफ्टरनून या गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग टू एवरीवन या आई जस्ट दैट दैट अनिता जस्ट कॉल्ड अस एक्चुअली शी इज यू नो स्ट्रगलिंग टू लॉग इन सो वी आर जस्ट helping her out yeah so um yeah uh, it's time to start uh, uh, second day's session a uh, uh, good morning uh, good afternoon and good evening to everyone uh, my name is this uh, meeting is being recorded yeah so my name is rajnish sharma i'm uh, head of plant quarantine unit here at ikiset Uh, we call uh, it plant quarantine unit and different cg centers you know it's named differently but uh, all of us are part of you know germplasm health unit um, i joined the cg center in 2006 and uh, in 2010 i was given the responsibility to uh, lead the uh, plant quarantine unit so in addition to uh, my role as a plant head of plant quarantine unit i'm also a principal scientist serial pathology so i take care of uh, diseases of sorghum uh, permeate and uh, finger millet as well um so um uh, to start with on behalf of the ghu team and on my behalf as well i welcome all the participants uh, in the uh, second day of phytosanitary awareness week uh, focused on asia region uh, there are three uh, cg ghus uh, present in this region which are ikada ikisat and eri working in this region for the uh, safe conservation and distribution of germplasm and breeding material uh of the mandate of the mandate crops of the uh, respective you know uh, crop centers we have uh, three invited speakers uh, from the national plant protection organizations of the host countries dr rola al amil uh, from lavnis agriculture research institute lavnon dr k anita she is head of uh, national bureau of plant genetic resources uh, regional station hyderabad india she is uh, mpp of ours uh, and uh, miss Alain uh, Tandav Molon, she is officer in charge, uh, Bureau of Plant Industry (BPI), that is uh, National Plant Quarantine Service Division, MBQST, the Philippines. So, uh, in addition, uh, the heads of three GHUs uh, uh, in the region will also provide update on the work being carried out in these GHUs. So, uh, in total, there are uh, six presentation in uh, today's sessions. Uh, the seminars in the sessions will focus on phytosanitary implications of global exchange of crop germplasm and emerging crop pest and pathogens in asia new plant pest and pathogens can have potential impact on the livelihood and food security um this a locust you know locust outbreak and the increasing infestation of fall armyworm are of great concern in the region in addition a uh, wheat blast Fusarium oxysorum, uh, tropical race four, the peach fruit fly, brown plant hopper of rice, uh, uh, UG ninety nine, a new virulent, uh, you know, uh, race of stem beet rust, and many more. Uh, there are potential threats to agriculture in the in Asia. So uh, today's seminars will highlight the collaborative role of the CGR GHUs and national plant protection organizations in preventing the introduction and spread of pest of in significance uh, in the region as well as uh, throughout the globe uh, uh we will we'll first have all those presentations and then uh, we'll take a question and answer in the end and dr safa uh, kumari from ikada uh, she is ghu head in ikada so she will uh, uh, moderate that session and then you know uh, we'll take uh, all those question and answers and uh, uh, we'll uh, follow the discussions after the presentations uh um, you can type your questions in the chat box and then uh, we can and then uh, you may uh, also mention uh, that to whom that question is addressed so that uh, it's easier for us to you know uh, uh, put the right question to the uh, you know right speaker so uh, for, for whom you have that questions um uh, i'll be keeping i'll keep on introducing you know uh, the concerned uh, speakers uh, one by one um, and then uh, without ado i think uh, we should start and then uh, 
our first speaker is uh, um, dr uh, uh, safa kumari uh, first of all i would like to congratulate safa for being nominated uh, to be you know bbc 100 women of 2020 my heartiest congratulations to safa uh, uh, safa is a plant biologist and head of ikada ghu at lebanon she has phd from aleppo university faculty of agriculture department of plant production syria uh she is working on legume and cereal virus at ikada uh, which includes survey for virus diseases in central and west of asia and north africa region detection uh, this, uh, you know uh, this includes detection host strains crop losses screening transmissions control serology production of anti sera preparation of diagnostic kits for detection of specific cereal and legume viruses and use of variety of serological techniques she is involved in phytosanitary safety and prevention of transboundary spread of seed borne uh, pest so uh, i would like to invite dr safa kumari for a presentation on a safe movement of food and forages crops germplasm safa you may uh, please share your screen and then uh, make your presentation safa please uh good morning you heard me rajan yes yes please okay good morning uh, good afternoon good evening for everybody from east to west hope uh, all you are doing well during covid-19 but before start my presentation i would like to thanks slava for your uh, hard work Uh, to prepare organize and manage this activity it's really highly appreciated and a big thanks to you yesterday i was talking with one it was one of my colleagues at ikarda and he told me thanks for coronavirus and i told him why he said that now we can arrange an, an excellent meeting from home and we don't need five star hotels to present maybe it's good um uh, uh i agree uh, with him uh, we can arrange a good meeting uh, from home but really uh, i will miss you all because the live meeting uh, has a different uh, the interaction with the people uh, you feel that you are uh, contact the people you 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 can discuss more than what we are doing now for, uh, online and hope i will finish within 10 minutes because you give me only 10 minutes uh, i will do my best to complete my presentation within uh, 10 minutes first thank you for giving uh, me the opportunity the opportunity to join this important activity and to introduce uh, introduce to you the safe movement of food and forage crop germoblast at the international center for agricultural research in the dry area The outline of my presentation uh, include the uh, introduction major quarantine uh, seed bomb pests for both crops legume and cereals impact and management of seed bomb pests and then I will conclude with a few uh, point uh, ICADA a member of CGIR uh, it's non is non-profit agricultural research institute that aim to improve the livelihood of the resource poor across the world's dry areas ikada research agenda covered the dry area of the inter developing country with a focus on the central central and west asia and north africa which call it siwana region from morocco and north in north africa to bangladesh in south asia it's from here that the center reach other dry area globally including sub saharan africa south asia china and latin america some of the world poorest country are located in this region based on the different situation in syria ikarda had the quarter were relocated temporarily in lebanon beirut since leaving aleppo syria in 20 uh, 2012 as part of its its decentralization ikarda has established integrated research platform 
that address research priority in each region. The center has developed four major platform. The headquarters platform was a, uh, uh, located in Lebanon, North Africa was a platform in Morocco, Sub-Saharan Africa was a platform in Ethiopia, and South Asia was a platform in India. ICADA received and distributed, distributed thousands of seed samples in addition to tons of base elite seed of release cultivar, worldwide distribution of nursery for, evaluate, for evaluation by national and international cooperators is a major component of ICADA gene bank and the plant breeding program. Short and long-term conservation of plant genetic resources at ICADA gene bank and Svalbard is one of the main activity of ICADA. Using high quality and healthy seed stock is critical for distribution for international nursery, trial and plant genetic resources. Several seed bomb based compromise seed quality, yield potential and green market value. As I mentioned, the main uh, platform for breedings and gene bank of ICARDA is located in Lebanon and Morocco. Uh, we have two gene banks, the first one in Lebanon, they cover the activity of faba bean, grass pea, forage, and range species and wild relative, whereas Morocco Gene Bank covers the activity of cultivated species of wheat, barley, chickpea, and lentil. For breeding program, we have uh, two uh, platforms in Lebanon and Morocco, whereas the international nursery is located in Lebanon and all the seed distributed from uh, Lebanon. The ICADA region is the center of genetic diversity of a number of food and feed crops. There are over 157,000 accession in ICADA gene bank, particularly important are the land races and wild relatives that have evolved under harsh condition over century. They are precious source of gene, genes needed for drought and heat tolerant and resistant to diseases and pests. This uh, uh, flowchart is uh, describe the movement of genetic resources and breeding line to and from ICARDA. Just so I will give you an example, what the, our activity, what we done in last year to, uh, to 2019, seeds around 116,000 accession were exchanged, around uh, 73,000 accession, wild relative land races, material under development, commercial, a variety were received from 50 different sources, such as research institution and germoplasm. In addition, around 52,000 uh, different accession, uh, ICARDA and international nursery, breeding material, gene bank materials uh, were distributed to cooperators in national program over uh, uh, the national program of the ICARDA region, as well as to the university breeding station in 70 countries. The quantity can vary from a, a few a seeds of wild species to several kilo uh, of commercial uh, variety. During two, uh, last year, around 671,000 diagnostic tests were done in post laboratory on both platform and the seed health lab in Morocco and Lebanon. This is the map of the international nursery distribution during last year. As I mentioned, the nursery distributed from uh, Lebanon and this is the map of the distributed of the around 154 a shipment for the international nursery related to the ICADA mandate crop. This is the map for distribution uh, of the uh, GM bank and breeding materials uh, during last year, uh, 2019. And here you can see maybe here the line is a very thin between two platforms. That means there is a big shuttle uh, seeds uh, shipment between Lebanon and Morocco for either for ICARDA gene bank or for ICARDA uh, planting uh, gene bank or breeding program. All this material distributed uh, is passed through seed health laboratory, other incoming or outgoing, this uh, to test it for seed borne quarantine disease. The key challenge of food. Uh, uh, germoplasm. Uh, unfortunately, I have a many pictures on the screen for for uh, for share people. I don't see that my my screen. I don't know what I should do.
sorry. Uh, emerging, uh, the, the key challenge of germoblast movement uh, is emerging and insect pests, minor pests and diseases are becoming important based on the climate change. Quarantine need to be very well uh, planned in advance, staff capacity building and seed testing facilities. Uh, wheat and barley are infected with many insect pests and disease, some of them like wheat, stem rust, uh, UG99 raises some pests and low smart like also viruses like barley yellow dwarf, produce serious damage in both yield and quality of grain, causing great economic losses to farmers. Some of these are quarantine seed based, uh, uh, seed borne based, not all of them. Some of them are uh, produced or case a high, a high yield loss, but not all of them are quarantined seed borne uh, pests. Also, uh, legumes are infected with many insect pests and disease, such as Ascochyta blight, wild root rot viruses, and also a weed like Orobanki. And some of these are quarantine seed pests. Uh, this is the list of the quarantine pests. I will not go in details for all one by one. But in general, we have lists for each crop. For seed, we have one for wheat and barley, discovering viruses, bacteria, fungal disease, nematode, and the seed storage. Also for legume uh, quarantine seed uh, born based, we have a different list for each crop, also covering for all seed born uh, based. The seed born based may result in loss in germination, reduce seed, the seed, discoloration of seed coat, development of plant diseases, and distribu distribution of the pathogen to new area. Toxin production is in, in infected also seeds like ergot. For example, uh, botrytis and ascochyta and also other viruses uh, produce a staining for the seed coat, which is affect the marketing of the seed, also at affecting storage and germination. Also, the production of wheat is affected by seed borne disease like common bond and loose smut, which, which, which results in reduced crop yield and poor grain quality. At ICADA, we have a different type of the management and for, the, uh, for seed borne disease. And this can be done in seed healthy uh, testing, crop production practice, chemical control, like seed fumigation, seed treatment, seed washing, and also phytosanitary measure, seed certification, and plant quarantine. First, the management through seed health testing ICARDA has two uh, seed, uh, seed health laboratory and both platform, one in uh, Lebanon and one in Morocco. Both of them well equipped and we are using the up uh, to date diagnostic method, method for detection from a visual examination till PCR or molecular high technology most molecular test. We have different also tests for all the type of the pathogen for the insect and for all, all the Icardamonded crop. Through this process, infected seeds are spotted and replaced with healthy stock. The management through crop protection uh, practice, this is, can be done through the cover, uh, crop stage stages before planting like or remove or reduce the source of infection during the planting, using a, a healthy seeds or use a seed treatment during the flowering or crop stage and during the grow, uh, uh, growing season and field inspection is very to remove the infected plant during the harvesting or processing and also during the storage adjust storage condition to avoid development of storage based fumigation or chemical application now for uh, also we are using the management through chemical control like seed treatment with fungicide or insecticide Fumigation is very important because it's wide spect spectrum and we can kill all the stage of insect for storage and seed washing using sodium uh, hypochlorite, this mainly for cereals. This just, I will give you an example for the one example for management of common bond affecting wheat at Icarda. When you, uh, you can see here, when, before we start the management, the number of spike infected with common bond, it was uh, 2,815 per hectare. But after using the different uh, option of management, like rotation, uh, ro uh, roguing, or friction, automatic washing, seed treatment with fungicide and insecticide, 
we decrease the number of spike 229 per hectare and the infection uh, is reduced or decreased from 1.7 within five years to uh, 0, 0.00 and hope with a, with, within two or three years the infection it will be zero with the common bank for ECARDA materials. Now this is the flow chart uh, for uh, progress of incoming seeds uh, uh, to ECARDA. Uh, at Seed Health Laboratory check the seed health for of all incoming seed to ICARDA and apply the quarantine regulation of the host country. As we are working here in Lebanon and uh, Morocco, we should be followed the quarantine regulation of these uh, both uh, host countries. Through fumigation, seed health testing, seed treatment, growing only the acceptable seed at post entry quarantine field and field inspection, roguing field certification, this after or post harvest. Now, this is the flow chart for progress of outgoing uh, seeds. Uh, also, we test all the seeds before dispatching from ICARDA. Again, the quarantine regulation, this based on the receiving country uh, through other during the growing season, during multiplication, uh, through field inspection, roguing, or field blood certification, or post harvest harvesting, seed health testing, fumigation, and seed treatment. And finally, center, centrifuge, centrifugation of ICARDA germoblast. This batch, along with all required quarantine documents, fulfilling the international phytosanitary requirement and SMT8. ICARDA seed health in both uh, platform, Lebanon and Morocco, we are good links with MBBO because seed health lab applied to MBBO for phytosanitary certificate for the export of material. MBBO issue phytosanitary certificate for us after the condition has been satisfied that the material being exported need the phytosanitary standard of the IBBC and the importing country. Seed health comply with the national regulation obtaining import permit and phytosanitary certificate document for all seed or plant material sent or received. We are working closely in Lebanon with important export plant quarantine department that belong to Ministry of Agriculture in Lebanon. In Morocco, we are working on ONSA, the National Office of Food Safety. This belongs to Ministry of Agriculture and Fishers in Morocco. Conclusion. Oh, sorry. A using procedure Using the procedure of seed-borne pest management as a full package is a stone for safe exchange germoblasm. The risk of introducing a seed-borne disease onto a nursery can be uh, greatly reduced by use of, uh, of a good quality seeds. The development of effective detection method will help in rapid and accurate detection of seeds. The blend quarantine measure act as an important tool in providing effectively implementation for management of pests, which uh, in turn help in maintaining the productiv productivity of a crop. Finally, I would like to thank ICARDA Seed Health Stop in both platform in Lebanon and uh, Morocco, and thanks for ICARDA International Staff in Lebanon, and many thanks for Dream Bank that a breeding program staff in both platform Lebanon and Morocco for their kind. Many, many thanks for our MBBO in Morocco and Lebanon. And thanks for CRAP for their funding uh, through uh, uh, funding for the uh, GHU bank platform. Thank you very much. Thank you, Safa, for a nice presentation. Uh, you highlighted the, you gave update on the the role of germplasm health unit in facilitating the germplasm and breeding material uh, of ICARDA, uh, both from Lebanon as well as from Morocco. Um, uh, we are running with short of time, so I'll directly uh, go to the, uh, my next uh, presenter. Um, our next speaker is Dr. Rola Amil from Lebanese Agriculture Research Institute, Lebanon. Ms. Rola has a diploma of agriculture engineering Am I audible? Um, hello. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, 
Ms. Shola has a diploma of Hierarchical Engineering with major in plant production. Ms. De MS degree in sustain Sustainable Agriculture and PhD in plant production. Again, major plant pathology from Paris. She has uh, 20 years of experience in plant production at LARI, upgrading her position from research assistant to associate a researcher and was nominated as head of plant breeding department and seed health unit. She is in charge of breeding programs and responsible for routine work of seed health of imported goods to the country. She also has the responsibility of monitoring and surveillance of the transboundary breed diseases in Lebanon since 2020. I invite Dr. Rola to make her presentation on major activities of Lebanese National Seed Health uh, Testing Program. Dr. Okay. Rola, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to thank the organizer and uh, Dr. Safa Kumari to give me the, the opportunity to share our experience from uh, the Lebanese Agriculture Research Institute, Lebanon. I will start uh, sharing my screen. It's okay now. Can I start? Yes, uh, Rula, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Safa. Um, uh, so, uh, I am uh, Rula Amil from Lebanon. Uh, maybe the question is why Lebanon? I think why Lebanon? Maybe because, it, not maybe, for sure, because, because ICARDA is located uh, here in Lebanon. We have, uh, we have uh, like the headquarter and the hub station of ICARDA. Um, moreover, uh, the international nurseries uh, for ICARDA are grown here in Lebanon, and uh, we are keen to know about the pathogen, about the pest, uh, uh, and uh, to, to, to give the feedback uh, for them for the ease and uh, safe movement of their germplasm. So as, uh, as you may see here that Lebanon is a small country located at the eastern part of the Mediterranean. Um, uh, the capital is Beirut and as I mentioned, small country. Uh, but with this small country, uh, we have the four seasons, the Mediterranean seasons, which give the which gives the chance to to grow many and uh, diverse uh, crops. Uh, as you may see here on this uh, on this uh, map, we have uh, the on the on the coastal area near uh, Beirut. We have uh, the tropical and uh, the fruit trees in the Bika Valley. Uh, where the potatoes tubers are shown with cereals here is the Wicca Valley where the, we can uh, we can um, mainly grow uh, potatoes legumes cereals and uh, and vegetables um, so uh, I can uh, so as, uh, as uh, the chairman uh, mentioned I'm coming from the Lebanese Agriculture Research Institute Larry. It's a governmental organization uh, working under the Ministry of Agriculture uh, Supervision. It was established in 1964. And uh, since that time, we are conducting basic and applied agriculture research. At the beginning, uh, we were like two stations. At, uh, as mentioned in the map, we were at Tal Amara. Tal Amara is close to Terbol. If you can see here, we have, we have uh, Tal Amara. It's uh, the, big, uh, the big font. Uh, next, it's Terbul, where Ikarda is located. We are about uh, 10 kilometers, even less uh, um, distance between the two stations. Uh, at the beginning, we were um, uh, Tel Amara and Fanar, and later on, uh, up till now, we are at 12 stations across the country, scattered in agriculture areas, and uh, it, it's scattered in a region to be close to the farmers. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, we have in Lebanon different agroclimatic zones. Uh, for Larry's vision, I think as this vision now it's uh, it's uh, worldwide for all the agricultural uh, research to maintain agriculture sustainability, maintain food security, conserve biodiversity, and protect environment. And all uh, this uh, as well 
uh, with, the, with the achievement of the UN SDGs, especially 1, 2, 5, 6, 13, and 17. Um, and la lately, we were, we were committed uh, to, do, to, uh, to go to the SDG 5, especially for, what, for, uh, for uh, equality. Uh, moreover, more than the basic and applied uh, research, uh, we, are, we are very much committed uh, with agriculture extension. Uh, in, in many in many fields, plant product, production, plant protection, animal production, water management, weather forecast, food processing, and safety. And uh, moreover, we have some uh, some services to the public, like um, some analysis to the food safety, soil analysis, and of course the plant health and animal health. Uh, we have a wide uh, cooperation at international, regional, local, and uh, and level. So we have co cooperation with ministries, uh, universities, NGOs, the schools, cooperation, and communities. And it's a it's a long list. Uh, let me let me uh, highlight first that um, uh, the legislation framework and all related uh, uh, legislation to, to quarantine, as uh, Dr. Safa mentioned, is coming from the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, so it's a legal institution for decision-making and issuing the laws and decrees. Many years ago, I, I think it was in 2010, um, uh, it was like um, a workshop to put the decrees to protect uh, the Lebanese flora from invasive pests and diseases through importation and uh, many decrees was uh, was done for mango, for potato seeds, potato and wheat for uh, human consumption, forage uh, seeds, seeds, seed, seedlings, wood material, and and these. Uh, so, and from that time we started uh, we started uh, at Telari to to work with this. Um, uh, so, the Ministry of Agriculture is the institution that gives the legislation but the LARI, our institution is the, uh, is, the, um, uh, is doing the analysis and we are agreed to give the analysis in our laboratory so i will be talking about the plant protection department in Tanhamara and the main headquarter uh, they have uh, they have a routine and country surveillance to detect and, and identify viruses, phytoplasma, bacteria, fungi that infect crop and the vegetables. And of course, they are evaluating uh, the sanitary, sanitary status of main food, fruit and pro and uh, and vegetables. <laughs> and uh, lately, with the, the emergence with the emergence of uh, of uh, new di new di diseases. Uh, the plant protection department is monitoring the quarantine uh, disease of uh, potatoes. Uh, as we can see, we have Ralstonia solanacerium and Clavibacter michihantis, and they are identifying these two uh, these two diseases with under uh, fluoros uh, uh, fluorescent microscopy. And uh, they are working uh, very uh, uh, closely on flampox viruses, and you know with the emergence of Zgrailella fastidiosa, all the Mediterranean, all the Mediterranean uh, countries, they are working on this uh, diseases. On the plant, on the nematode department, <coughs> um, uh, as well, uh, they are working on detection on, of plant uh, parasitic nematodes user, using diff different techniques of extraction and, morphology, and morphological identification. Uh, they are working on many uh, on many nematodes, and they are trying to uh, to identify uh, new uh, to identify uh, uh, new nematodes. Um, they are highlighting more on these quarantine diseases: uh, Globodermis opiensis, Dytilenchus destructor, Dytilenchus dispatch, especially on uh, on the legumes, and they are working now on Bursifalenchus on pine uh, it's on pine uh, so from the entomology as well uh, they are conducting in country pest surveillance on many crops uh, as uh, it's fruit flies lobesia tuta and uh, tuta absoluta um, it has been really a major a major uh, uh, pest on uh, tomatoes uh, um, and now we have some work uh, on uh, tuta uh, by identifying some uh, peptides or antimotoxin from uh, pisom, 
in order in order to in order to uh, uh, to um, in order uh, to minimize the population of tuta in the grass houses. Uh, moreover. Um, um, this, uh, this department is working on the import export uh, on identification the, the past from the uh, uh, from the port and uh, here as well we can see in this table the number of pests they, uh, they are quarantined pests here we don't have in Le we don't have them in Lebanon but we have them in other country of course. And uh, we can, uh, the, the department or the engineer in charge uh, could uh, identify this pest. And of course, once we identify this pest in the commodities, the commodities, the commodities are rejected and they are banned to enter the country. Uh, in fact, uh, I will be um, I will be talking now about the plant breeding health, seed health lab and the National Gene Bank. It, in fact, it's a um, it's, it's, we are uh, working closely here uh, because we cannot uh, we cannot separate the, the plant genetic resources from the sea, from the from the diseases from plant breeding. Uh, so uh, at Talamara we have a seed bank that was established in 2020 in collaboration with the Millennium Seed Bank, and uh, it uh, contains 1,376 seed collection. Uh, from 82 plant families, and uh, all all our um, our flora, it's representing 31 percent of the Lebanese flora. They used to be shipped to Svalbard to be to be kept uh, to be kept uh, there for uh, for emergency. Um, uh, so, uh, for the seed health test in Lebanon, what we are doing? So, as uh, as uh, Dr. Safa mentioned that. For the ease and the safe germplasm movement, we have to, to deliver a clean product. Uh, so this is a list that uh, of the quarantine pest and disease. Uh, we don't have Tiletia controversia in Lebanon. We don't have uh, Carnal uh, Tiletia antica, Claviceps, Claviceps purpurea. We don't have it, as well as the nematode Anguina triticae. Uh, we did surveys many times for it, and we couldn't find it. Hope, um, uh, thanks God. Um, uh, lately, it was like five years ago. We have uh, an invasion of uh, the Solanum elanifolium uh, in in the northern uh, part of the Vita, but uh, this, uh, this Solanum was eradicated once we 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 found it. Uh, but and late, and then later on we could not find it, so it was, it's on the list of the uh, quarantine weed as well. If uh, Trogoderma granarium, we don't have it in Lebanon, and uh, it's on the quarantine list. Uh, since all this list we don't have it, uh, we are keen uh, to identify and to search for and uh, for for the for from the uh, shipment we're receiving uh, to Lebanon if we have this disease and pest or not. Uh, I think uh, this, um, uh, even for the movement uh, of uh, the shipment of cereals and legumes, uh, as uh, this it was seen by Safa, so we are signing the SMTA as well. We are uh, preparing with the MPPO, we are preparing the phytosanitary, phytosanitary um, certificates. A certificate of origin and of course the non-commercial invoice uh, and it has to be one dollar uh, and uh, one, once we are preparing our our uh, um, pest list or uh, we are asking uh, the country to to, to 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 send the shipment if they have any special requ requirement in in, um, in terms of quarantine pest and diseases since the chairman and the staff were, were uh, mentioned about trust, and uh, we know that trust, uh, they are uh, posing uh, a major threat on the wheat, on wheat, uh, both uh, um, uh, bread wheat, uh, durum wheat, and also we, we, we've seen it on barley last year and this year uh, here in, uh, in the region. Uh, so the population, we are keen to know of the, about the population variability of this transboundary disease. So as you know, as you know, it's Puccinia triticae, Puccinia striiformis triticae, 
and the PGT Pixinia Grammys. We're committed to work from 2010 on the surveillance of these diseases. Uh, once we're doing the surveillance, we are going for spore multiplication and the rest typing. Um, as you may know that um, uh, uh, the loss from uh, rust on uh, wheat, uh, on, 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 uh, on both wheat and uh, barley, sometimes it reached to 80%. If the onset of the disease were on the critical uh, phase, it will, it will, uh, it will uh, damage the, uh, the yield and the quality of the seeds. Uh, so we're committed uh, with ICARDA since 2010 to do the country, to do the, the survey. Uh, the survey and uh, the survey is uh, done uh, with uh, by taking the, all the GPS data, all the uh, information. We are uh, usually we are um, following uh, some uh, some uh, questionnaire, and they are they are the from Borlaug Global Rust Initiative this uh, this uh, formulaire, and we are reporting every year about uh, this. Uh, we are reporting on uh, and. Uh, uh, we are putting online on all the um, data. Uh, so once uh, we are uh, we are having uh, the samples, uh, usually it has to be like in single lesion. It should not be a, a, a full a full uh, a full leaf full of spores. It should be uh, one lesion only uh, because we have we are we are uh, to be sure that. Uh, um, it is a, a pure a pure race. After after having this uh, lesion, we are putting uh, in spore uh, multiplication uh, on susceptible uh, check. Usually worldwide, it's a Morocco. It's a Morocco um, uh, cultivar. Uh, and then after having this spores, we are putting them on differential set. The differential set usually we are uh, requesting them from Icardo. Uh, we have the European and the worldwide for yellow rust, and we have the North Af American for stem rust. Uh, usually, when when we are uh, inoculating, we have uh, we are uh, we are putting the plants in under controlled uh, under under controlled condition from uh, temperature and from light because you you know that uh, the uh, the, spo the yellow the both rust or three rust they are. Uh, they, they have some high uh, requirement uh, of light for spore multiplication. For spore multiplication. Uh, once uh, once we are we are having such symptoms on the on the plants. In fact, after fifteen uh, days, we are uh, we are uh, scoring uh, we are scoring the diseases uh, following some scales. Um, in fact, um, based on this. We are uh, we are uh, we we came out with the with the conclusion that uh, last year in 2019 and 2020 uh, we have uh, two genes that were broken and it was YR10 and YR24. The years before it was not uh, on the pathogen with the pathogen uh, and um, this race was very common on uh, Durum. Uh, because you know, as you know, the um, yellow rust uh, before it was uh, it was uh, solely solely to uh, to bread wheat, but from last year, from la from from last year we started to see it uh, heavily on uh, durum meat, and that, that's why we call it uh, durum race. It's a yellow rust durum race with the uh, with the breakdown of YR10 and YR24. And uh, it's new to the region, and this uh, and this uh, information could be very important for the breeders in the, in the in the Lebanon and uh, and uh, for the region as well. Uh, concerning to UG99 and the stem rust, UG99 is a virulent trace of stem rust that emerged from Uganda in 1999. And it um, um, it start to to come up uh, to the to other countries in the East Africa, and it reached uh, to Iran in 2019, but it was eradicated uh, at that time. Uh, from that time, from 2010, from 2010, we started as well to monitor uh, this uh, disease here in Lebanon, uh, and uh, based on the rest analysis and uh, putting the uh, and putting our uh, our 
uh, spores on differential sets. Uh, we have some uh, breakdown of other genes, but till now the UJ99 uh, is not present in Lebanon. When we're, uh, when we're seeing uh, UG99, we have to, uh, to look at the SR31 and SR36, since they are still holding here, so we don't have the UG99 in Lebanon. I uh, think I'm coming to the, to the last uh, but not least uh, slide, and I would like uh, to, 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 to add that partnership, collaboration, communication, and engagements, engagement, uh, commitment, uh, and commitment uh, at all levels, in fact, are key of, uh, of, of success in our uh, work. And uh, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Rola, for a nice presentation. Uh, Very nicely you. highlighted the, you know, the surveillance to identify viruses, phytoplasma and fungi, nematodes, and monitoring of new uh, diseases, uh, monitoring virulence spectrum of yellow and black breast pathogen uh, variability. Thank you very much for a very nice presentation. Yeah, we definitely will have some question answers and then we can take up uh, in the end. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, this next is my turn and then uh, I'll start me go to my presentation. Let me share the screen. Okay, so is it visible? Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, so I'm given uh, ten minutes of presentation. Uh, my presentation is on phytosanitary um, measures for the safe conservation and distribution of germplasm of equicide mandate crop. I'll very briefly touch upon the uh, you know uh, the, the work what we carry out at uh, equicide GHU. Uh, we all know about the you know the importance of seed health and seed uh, healthy seed is important to prevent the transboundary diseases as well as for the conservation of healthy seed uh, in the gene banks. Only uh, if the seed is healthy, we we are going to get a healthy crop out of it. At Ikiset, we work uh, for the mandate crops like uh, groundnut, chickpea, pigeon pea, sorghum, pearl millet, and finger millet. And then we also have uh, germplasm conserved for uh, another five uh, small millets. Uh, at GHU, our major activity is focused on the, uh, uh, to conduct the seed health testing for the germplasm or breeding materials which are meant for the um, export or import, as well as a newly acquired and regenerated gen germplasm for conservation in the gene bank. Uh, coming to the export process, uh, you know, we have, uh, uh, you know, different samples that comes to uh, GHU for quarantine clearance. So uh, whatever we do, that's in collaboration with our MPPU and for us, uh, because we share germplasm uh, in small quantity for, and for small quantity, the MPPU is MPPGR, that is uh, National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources. On the right hand side, you'll see the, the, the process, the quarantine process, what we follow and different steps involved there are certain mandatory tests and uh, there are certain additional tests which are required uh, uh, for the quarantine processing. But uh, in addition, now we have another step actually, uh, which is the, uh, before we actually initiate the process of quarantine clearance, we need to get the approval from government of India uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the export request. So what we have to do is now, uh, this is again the responsibility of GHU uh, at ECSET to uh, collate all the uh, documents from the concerned scientists who tend to export their material. So uh, these are the uh, declaration certificate, there's a performer invoice, uh, seed list, then uh, when, because the germplasm is uh, exchanged under SMTA, so we need to have that SMT and MTA if it's a breeding material, as well as the import permit. So all these, in, uh, uh, these documents, uh, they are uh, compiled and then they are submitted to uh, the uh, government of India uh, the NFP, you know, national, national focal point for the uh, approval. So once uh, these documents, they are approved, only then, uh, uh, I mean, once that uh, export request that's approved, 
only then we can initiate the quarantine at the actual quarantine clearance of the uh, those samples now uh, these are the actually uh, so far also mentioned you know the different steps uh, what uh, we usually follow for the uh, uh, you know to test the seed health status of this germ uh, the germplasm or the breeding material so i'll also highlight a few of them um, so there are certain mandatory tests and then uh, there are certain additional tests also also there this additional test they are uh, you know they are based on the requirement of the importing country so if in case of in case on the import permit there are certain additional test uh, uh, additional declaration which are required so we need to meet those declaration as well and then we need to conduct all those tests so uh, the when we receive the material in uh, our pq or uh, ghu so very first step what we need to do is we have to fumigate that material so we uh, have the accredited fumigation operator both for aluminum phosphide as well as for methyl bromide so uh, the, uh, we treat these seeds uh, and the objective here is uh, every seed whatever uh, it, i mean enter the ghu it should not carry any you know uh, infected uh, pest along with it so it may uh, uh, you know otherwise it may contaminate other seed as well as and also it's a requirement for many countries that the seed should be treated with the uh, uh, the fumigants as well as it will protect if there are any infestation of the uh, insect pest is there after that we uh, go for the visual examination uh, so this is done just to you know uh, select the apparently healthy uh, seed so if there is some discolored or uh, some suspected seed is there so during that process that seed is eliminated and then we actually go for the blotter test um, uh, we uh, you know incubate the seed sample in the uh, moist petri plates uh, for 7 days and then we uh, observe it under microscope uh, to uh, look at if there is any associated uh, pathogenic fungi present or not and then there are another test called seed washing or sedimentation test so this is done in case you want to identify if association of any uh, rust or snot fungi is there and then uh, uh, ultimately we can also go for the grow out test uh, especially in case if, uh, there is if we suspect any uh, virus infection is there um yeah uh, coming uh, directly to the uh, number of uh, samples exported i am specifically you know i'm mentioning about the last year uh, how many samples we process this this is just to show that you know the the amount or the number of uh, uh, reactions what uh, we carry out in uh, i mean this is true with all the ghus and especially in case of uh, uh, plant quarantine you know that is said so during 2019 we exported seed sample for propagation uh, uh, there were total 39 consignments uh, and the total number of sample analyzed was 6848 and uh, out of which 369 samples they got rejected because of the association of uh, some of the quarantine significant pests so in addition to material uh, you know exported for propagation we also facilitate the export of uh, some of the material which is used for the i mean which is exported for some of the destructive chemical analysis Uh, some specific experiment are required so that also uh, we facilitate that export and then uh, there were total 16 consignments and then uh, we have um, uh, exported around more than 5000 samples uh, during last year these are the uh, yeah, when we talk about the general plasm exchange there are two very important documents as i mentioned so first is import permit which is in, issued by the importing country and then uh, you know if based on the past risk analysis or uh, you know the the crop from which country the the particular country is importing so uh, they can they have them uh, some specific uh, guidelines or additional declaration as well so what so the, those are you know mentioned in the import permit so if there are some specific requirement so exporting country have to abide by that and then take up those all those uh, tests to certify the material is free from the pest mentioned in the uh, uh, as a additional declaration to be declared that the pest are free from those uh, the sorry the seed is free from those pest and pathogen so is a one example of uh, the import permit and then based on this uh, test conducted uh, the, uh, the those seed the results are shared with the nbpgr who is our nppu and then once they are satisfied then uh, this phytosanitary certificate is issued so um, after that the seed are uh, you know treated with some chemical fungicide if allowed by the importing country and and finally the uh, seed is dispersed along with the this import permit and the phytosanitary certificate to the uh, concerned uh, consignee 
Uh, this is the, uh, you know, uh, the example, I mean, the snap show the global distribution of uh, the germplasm and breeding material, but XRPQ has facilitated and over 1.34 million seed samples we have been able to export after 1974 uh, to 174 countries. And uh, this include the germplasm for all the six mandate crop as well as uh, the small uh, millets. And all this has happened because of our close collaboration with the uh, NBPGR. And then uh, we probably say it has been done without uh, and, uh, and even as without any single interception of any first of exotic you know, origin. Uh, uh, then uh, coming to the uh, import, so uh, we arrange import permit for our scientists and that is, uh, again, we uh, get it from the NVPGR and then, uh, then we share that NVPGR, uh, sorry, we share with the, the, this uh, import permit with the, 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 the consigner and then, you know, uh, here we also have a checklist actually. So what to do and what not to do. So uh, we also share that checklist uh, uh, through our uh, concerned scientists. Uh, and then because uh, uh, it's very important point here is the seed material should not be sent directly to the concerned scientist in EPSET. It has to be sent to the Director National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, New Delhi. And sometimes what happens if the if the seed material is directly sent to uh, Acrisat, then, then it's get held up in the custom and uh, many times we uh, lose that material as well. So uh, we specifically mentioned that don't uh, send this seed directly to the scientists, send it to the uh, director National Bureau of Plant Genetic Process. And then if the, they follow uh, the guidelines or the, you know, um, uh, this checklist, do and don't in this checklist what we have mentioned. So then that's uh, that will facilitate the you know, smooth exchange of plasma. Uh, this is uh, the example for 2019, uh, how many samples we uh, have imported uh, uh, from different uh, countries for the different crops. So uh, somewhere around uh, 6,000 samples were import, uh, imported, imported with the total uh, more than 11,000 diagnostic reactions. Again, um, uh, if we look at the you know uh, compiled list, so we have uh, imported uh, some um, um, the samples from 96 countries uh, uh, till you know 2019, and then uh, on the left left hand side you'll see the you know the crop grown in the post anti uh, quarantine isolation area. So uh, when we talk about import, so this is very important step. The post, the growing the crop in post anti quarantine isolation area, because whatever the seed we import, it is not directly released to the concerned scientists. Before that, it has to go to the isolation area where the uh, that crop is grown, and then this is inspected throughout the uh, crop growth period, uh, both by us as well as uh, by uh, the scientists from NDPGA. And then, uh, because of this, we could uh, intercept. A, you know, uh, several uh, fungal, bacterial, and viral diseases, which otherwise could have been introduced in our area. So uh, that's what uh, I just mentioned. So it's a very important step. So a plant, current, uh, and any seed, whatever we import, that must pass through the post-entry quarantine inspection. Then, as I mentioned, uh, uh, in addition to uh, facilitating this, uh, you know, export and import for Equiset, uh, the PQ uh, also process seed sample for conservation in the gene bank. So uh, this graph shows the uh, number of uh, seed sample processed for different crops for the conservation in uh, Ecosite gene bank from 2012 to 2019. This red bars shows the number of each crop uh, which were infected by the, uh, uh, the quarantine segment pest. So when we detect such uh, pest associated with the germplasm, so, uh, so that type of germplasm is uh, unfit for conservation and it cannot enter into germplasm, uh, uh, you know, so, but it has to go for, again, regeneration. So uh, we share all this data with the gene name. So whatever the material generated or acquired, that is assessed for seed health test. And then based on this observation, if the uh, seed is healthy, only then it can go for the conservation and then other material which is impacted that that goes for the regeneration. Again and again, you know, after harvesting, we again assess that uh, the seed health status of those germplasm accessions. 
these are the different you know uh, the, the different pathogens or saprophyte mostly these are the saprophyte which were found in case of uh, uh, the germplasm that was uh, tested for seed health and then uh, this is this is for you know for different crops and different uh, fungal species which were detected as given out here now uh, you know um, the one important uh, activity is the treatment of uh, the seed with the fungicide and this is done to eliminate any seed worm fungi but what we need to investigate you know a uh, new uh, fungicide molecule as well because when uh, if we keep on continuing the same uh, molecules there is a risk of you know development of the fungicide resistance in the fungi as well as uh, uh, many countries they you know uh, uh, they are going to ban even india is going to ban some of those chemicals which are currently being used uh, for the uh, for the seed treatment so what we did we tested the efficacy of uh, different fungi because uh, that we need diagnostic identify new uh, you know fungi that's also our mandate activity so we tested the efficacy of different fungi uh, uh, the uh, the fungicide again different fungi and we could find uh, uh, two fungicides uh, one is half which is combination of carbon dioxide and mycogen and then the another is uh, tetraconazole plus trifloxis trifloxis trobin so they were very effective and uh, i mean uh, i mean in case of sorghum and uh, permanents more effective than the uh, currently uh, used uh, uh, fungicide for the seed treatment so uh, so this we can recommend that this fungicide can be used uh, I, i mean that has to be recommended in consultation with npp only but we this is our observation that this fungicide can be uh, used for the seed treatment of uh, uh, these these crops so we also i mean it's not only for uh, uh, ecosat mandate crop but we also uh, uh, have cross cg you know collaboration and then we because uh, cement uh, um, uh, office is housed in uh, uh, ecosat and they do work on a major plasma so we also help them to uh, facilitate the export of maize samples so for the last 3 uh, years we have uh, uh, processed more than 40 4500 samples for them and then out of that only 13 samples were rejected all our activities uh, that have been mapped to this uh, operational map and there are different component and then because we are moving towards the quality management system in our ghu so all these activities they are guided by a specific sop so, so for each of these activities uh, we have different sops and those guide this uh, um, uh, those specific activities Uh, there are certain new initiative at the cg level so we are uh, working on you know um, exploring the possibility of using non invasive techniques for seed worm uh, pest uh, and pathogens uh, use of you know uh, nucleic acid based techniques we are at present at this side we are not using it but we are exploring as i mentioned we are moving towards the quality management system we have already the sop is developed then working instruction for equipment Uh, we are in process of having barcoding system to capture seed health as data. I already mentioned the um, testing of efficacy of different fungicide and identifying new fungicide for seed treatment. And then capacity building is also one of the component. We are all, uh, you know, we are already doing this phytosanitary awareness week. Um, um, and then uh, we also do some of the training uh, to national and international plant protection staff in collaboration with National Institute of Plant. health management waste at hyderabad so uh thank you very much for your uh, patience listening to my presentation and then uh, uh, i would like to specifically thank genbank platform um, and especially uh, nbpj our nppo and my colleagues in ghus thank you very much okay uh now i'll i'll move i'll move on to the next presentation uh, our next speaker is dr k anita head of nvpj regional station hyderabad india and uh, this station was established to facilitate germ plasm exchange of fecal cell dr anita has involved in um, rendering content services for the past 30 years to more than 50 organizations in south india examined uh, over 700000 samples of germplasm meant for export and import to give quarantine clearance 
which include the uh, material meant for CG centers, including our Ekisat cement and AVRDC, uh, which are housed in our Ekisat campus, and state agriculture universities, other research institutes, and private sectors. She intercepted several important fungi, bacterial, and viral pathogens, including quarantine pest on varied crop germplasm introduced from countries all over the world. Besides this, she has been involved in screening germplasm for resistance to biotic stresses and resisted uh, dolicus bean and chili accession resistant to anthrocnose and aphid. She has more than 80 such publications to her credit and was chief editor of Indian Journal of Plant Protection. I invite Dr. Anita for the presentation. Topic of her presentation is Global Exchange of Crop Germplasm Phytosanitary Implication with Reference to India. Dr. Anita, please. Thank you, Dr. Rajan, for the uh, introduction. And a very good afternoon to all of you. I hope I am audible. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, I would like to cover uh, the major points on phytosanitary issues with reference to India. Uh, although I make a mention about the uh, agreements, different international agreements and uh, the procedures in brief, I would uh, emphasize on the quarantine issues related to India. Uh, all of you are well aware that the plant genetic resources are the uh, key building blocks for the crop improvement program and the diversity, genetic diversity is uh, very, very important for the, uh, to meet the requirements in uh, future climate change and also the uh, current crisis. And each country is dependent on other countries for uh, import of uh, variable uh, diverse germplasm and also to import uh, important uh, new crops and for adaptation. Coming to the uh, importance of uh, CGIR gene banks, they are playing the crucial role uh, in distributing the germplasm to different all over across the world. And if you see the information uh, presented by Galuri and his associates in 2016, so 4,18,934 uh, samples were distributed uh, by Ikusat itself and followed by many other uh, CGIR uh, gene banks. Uh, apart from distribution, even, uh, they are uh, more active in acquiring the material. Uh, acquisitions are also uh, up to the mark. And uh, Helmut and his associates in 2020, they have uh, published an article. It's wonderfully, they have analyzed the information and how the fluctuations are happening in acquisition or uh, in distributing the germplasm. So I request all the participants to go through this article and it's uh, very well written. Uh, coming to the uh, importance of quarantine, plant quarantine, you can understand uh, by looking at this picture, uh, the loss is caused due to introduced pests. Worldwide, uh, $1.4 trillion are uh, being lost. When compared to, uh, if you see the India figure, it's more, $91 billion. So, these figures give an indication about the importance of our uh, phytosanitary uh, is, uh, requirements. All of you are well aware that 2020 is, uh, has been declared as International Year of Plant Health by United Nations, Nations General Assembly. And they have also uh, estimated, the FAO estimated about 40% uh, of food crops are lost due to plant pests and diseases. They have also given some key messages about the precautions to be taken. Regarding international agreements, all of you know very well about the Convention on Biological Diversity, which has come into vogue uh, in 1993. And this reflects about the importance of uh, biodiversity and also the right to right to an equitable share of benefits arising from exploitation and also the responsibility to conserve its biodiversity. And WTO uh, 
has come up in 1995. Uh, sanitary and phytosanitary agreement also uh, was uh, formulated in 1995. Uh, this agreement helps in guiding the WTO members in developing and adapting the uh, SPS measures and also encourages them to harmonize their SPS measures. These are the three sisters under uh, SPS agreement. These are the bodies which cover, uh, take care about the plant health and animal health and food safety. Number one is IPPC, the other one uh, OIE, World Organization for Animal Health and Codex Elementarius uh, Commission for Food Safety. The IPPC develops the ISPMs basically and uh, to develop uh, the international standards, uh, Several uh, uh, expert consultation meetings uh, have to be uh, organized and these are, uh, there are several steps involved in uh, formulating the standards or standard setting process in which uh, developing the list of topics and drafting and consultation on uh, draft ISPMs, these are all important. One of uh, such uh, Expert consultation meeting. I uh, happen to be the participant of uh, APSA 6 phytosanitary expert consultation meeting, which was held on uh, 26th August 2020. And basically, they have uh, emphasized more on uh, the three aspects. They have updated the present status on e phyto system, that is, IPPC e phyto solution, systems approach, and lab accreditation. So about 69 participants have uh, uh, participated, including 29 members from MPPOs and uh, also representatives from seed associations and seed in, uh, industry stakeholders like International Seed Federation, APARI, and Crop Life Asia, etc. So if you go through the, uh, I'll just briefly explain about this. Uh, this is an electronic uh, system of uh, if, uh, generating phytosanitary certificates and which involves three components. Uh, the number one is uh, the hub, the gems and harmonization. The hub is a system to facilitate the exchange of e-phytos between NPPOs and the gems it's a centralized web-based system with, that allows countries without their own system to produce and receive uh, e-phytos through their help. And harmonization is the standard approach to format, structure and codes. Of course, uh, there are several benefits of this uh, e-phyto solution. It improves security, border efficiency and also uh, it uh, makes the things more faster and safer and it's cheaper also. Uh, but presently, the, as per their information uh, given by the International Seed Federation, uh, 90 economies have been registered so far with eFITO and 43 are fully active. Uh, the, these are the countries where uh, uh, they are able to receive and send the phytosanitary certificates across the countries. The advisory group, the industry representatives, uh, in the IAG, they have uh, given some suggestions like uh, uh, how to approach the countries. Actually, basically, they should sign up and then they should work on the technical issues that will enable exchanges. And once they are uh, uh, in live exchanges, then the trade users also have to be trained uh, to use the system. And then NPP was responsibility is to see that the system runs and works effectively. Uh, certain uh, challenges are there in the present current trade system. That's why they have uh, initiated the systems approach, but it takes a lot of time, uh, some more time to uh, get onto the, uh, like uh, to streamline the procedures and all, it takes uh, more time. So these are the challenges and if uh, regarding lab accreditation also, like they have updated the status Coming to the Indian scenario, the regulations part, uh, the, we follow base, the basic uh, regulation is the Destructive Insects and Pest Act 1914, followed by the plants, food, fruits, and seeds order. Uh, from time to time, the, these regulations have been uh, revised. And uh, now, the presently plant quarantine regulation of import in India order 2003 uh, is in existence. And several amendments uh, took place uh, about 84 uh, as on uh, 20th July. 
this is the structure uh, the framework uh, of uh, the NPPO, how our quarantine system functions. Under the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, two wings are there, Department of Agriculture Cooperation and Farmers Welfare and the DARE Department of Agricultural Research and Education. And DAC and FW, they take care of the commercial consignments, whereas ICR, uh, the NBPJ under the umbrella of ICR, we take care of the material meant for research purpose. So, for commercial consignments, again, uh, the under this NPPO, original plant quarantine stations are there and uh, plant quarantine uh, stations, about uh, seaports 46, airports 24 and land frontiers 24 are there. Uh, this is the DPPQS uh, structure, mainly uh, they, they cover the aspects on integrated uh, pest management, plant quarantine, regulation of pesticides, locust warning and also the training and capacity building. Coming to NBPGR, we have our headquarters in New Delhi and uh, this is the regional station uh, in Hyderabad. And we, only these two stations take care of the quarantine processing of uh, germplasm. And the, for the southern part of the country, Hyderabad uh, uh, does the work, whereas the rest of the India, NBPG and New Delhi takes care of. And for transgenics also, NBPG and New Delhi plan quarantine division takes care of the processing of transgenic material, whereas uh, the Hyderabad uh, division, we don't uh, deal with transgenics. Normally, this is the type of uh, material under exchange, germplasm, breeding material and white species, and also the research products such as uh, DNA, tissue culture products, dry leaf material, and also the lyophilized material. The basis uh, for our uh, uh, justification uh, depends on the schedules, like all of, all the quarantine uh, officials, we follow the plant quarantine order. Uh, there uh, several uh, schedules are mentioned, but for our uh, purpose, schedule four to eight are very crucial. Recently, they have uh, increased the number of uh, quarantine weed species also from 31 to 57. So these are all, I think all of you are uh, well aware. Uh, coming to the procedure for transgenic planting material prior to import, these are the basic uh, uh, requirements to meet with. The institutional biosafety committee is important for any institute, whoever wants to input uh, transgenics and also the DBD certified PEQ facility is uh, the essential uh, prerequisite. Once we receive the material for uh, at this station, we follow the uh, procedures like untreated planting material, initial step is joint inspection. Already Dr. Rajan has covered elaborately, so I'm not going to uh, give uh, details about this. This is the framework. And uh, though it is uh, uh, not advisable to uh, do the treated seeds. People are, we are receiving the treated consignments and then they are uh, to be sown, grown in post-entry quarantine nursery. And the harvest from disease-free plants only will be released to the Indian dust. And these treated consignments, uh, we conduct several inspections at the time of sowing and also at uh, different intervals, whenever uh, any uh, exotic pest is uh, observed, uh, depending upon the uh, situation, we take a decision. Coming to the transgenics, like uh, the procedures are similar. Only thing is uh, uh, they are grown in the containment facility. This is essential. And also those are, uh, they will be tested for the absence of terminator gene at PCR. And for virus testing also, several uh, procedures are being followed. If you see the previous five years uh, data, about 35,898 uh, accessions have been imported by CGR centers and processed by us, ICRISAT, SIMIT, and DIFRI. Uh, and even in 2020, the number uh, has been reduced. And these are some of the interceptions Dr. Rajan has already explained, so I'm just uh, skipping them. Uh, some more interceptions. Yeah, here uh, actually recently we have uh, uh, received the consignment of sorghum where uh, 
the germination percentage was very meager and fully they were uh, infected with bacterial contamination and also smart sore were seen along with the samples so the samples that are stored in gene bank should be properly checked before sending the material coming to the post entry quarantine after release post entry quarantine is uh, crucial uh, prerequisite uh, for before release the, the consignment uh, the responsibilities of the importer are also there like they will have to intimate the inspection agency in advance about the rate of planting of uh, material and they sh they should not uh, transfer or dispose of the consignment during post entry quarantine period and the pq officers should have the complete access these are all guidelines given and when uh, we don't mind taking stringent action when the disease incidence is there or when the precautions are not followed properly so we do uh, instruct and uh, go ahead with the incineration these are uh, some of the issues that we have experienced some uh, uh, people like they part of the yeast sample is sown exclusively for the sake of inspection which is not correct and they keep only uh, some sample for their purpose and only part of the sample is sown for inspection because the original seed that is received from different countries have to be uh, grown for one season especially uh, the uh, pathogens which uh, get exhibited only during the crop growth period they will have to be checked for their presence so if uh, there are chances of disease escape during that time and another one is growing of local variety in the borders of isolation area these are also in spite of the uh, instructions given like sometimes they neglect to see the uh, instructions and then they raise the local variety in the borders of isolation area uh, moreover they are curious to see how their uh, imported germplasm is performing as compared to the check variety and Uh, these are the instances where uh, some consignees are not proactive in inviting the quarantine officials for inspection at the right stage. And when you go and visit during harvesting, almost when the crop reaches to the harvesting stage, you will not be able to find anything. So that is another uh, problem. And in, uh, some more instances are observed where the uh, consignee uh, does pollination and. crossing studies like they want to save one uh, planting season and they go ahead with the crossing studies which is not correct so uh, all these uh, challenges are there and uh, quarantine officials are facing from time to time the uh, one more problem is that is time gap between release of the consignment and growing in the post entry quarantine isolation area because this problem is more prominent when uh, the hot water treat uh, the consignment is released after hot water treatment for example in case of pearl mill it also we give hot water treatment and paddy so if the time gap is more you are likely to lose uh, the viability of the seed and uh, automatically the uh, feedback would be only uh, the less germination and some concern is they ignore the instructions given in the ip and they grow the material in a different place this becomes difficult to conduct inspections and the other one is even uh, in a certified pq isolation area when several consignments of a single crop from different sources are to be grown so uh, this is a problem common problem even ecosat is facing so uh, for that like we are uh, uh, following the time isolation also which is not appropriate always but uh, even barrier uh, so also they are using and this is the problem uh, even uh, when a group of crops uh, where pathogens are uh, common like for example in case of cereals most of the pathogens are common so these are the uh, problems that we come across and and then on is duration between post entry quarantine inspection and the issue of uh, uh, release final release so when you observe any virus incidence by the time you conduct all the tests and uh, give the result the uh, enough like of course whenever virus suspected samples are seen immediately after collecting the sample you would uh, we, we would instruct uh, the we would see that the plant is uprooted and incinerated 
uh, but sometimes while uh, giving the decision final uh, about the final release it takes a lot of time so this is another uh, issue concern is uh, later on uh, they uh, there are chances that the complaints report from the concern is uh, delayed so those are uh, up to the import level now coming to the export this is the schematic representation now for the commercial consignments by dppps and the from nbpgr the material can be accessed by one of these uh, methods depending upon the category so the individuals or uh, entities defined under section 32 of dda the, uh, there is a procedure and indian researcher or government institution uh, they can send the biological resources for non commercial research purpose so they will have to follow the uh, second schedule and the third one is request under collaborative research projects and finally the request for nx crops this is under the multilateral system so itpgr fa uh, the india signed the treaty in uh, on 10th june and this is mainly for uh, conservation and sustainable use of dgr under this uh, declaration 64 crops are listed out and they can be they are accessible to everyone and it will be easier for uh, sending these annex crops coming to the uh, export uh, quarantine protocol that is uh, being followed at the uh, dr rajan has covered elaborately so i am not going to the export is obligation since it is important to identify the uh, fao designated material one of our uh, former colleagues dr ramesh has developed a software wherein once we enter the accession number we will be able to know whether it is fao designated or not so uh, that system has been developed and uh, this is also already sir dr rajan has highlighted he reduced my work and apart from the export processing uh, nbpg are also uh, involved in uh, sending samples for conservation of swalbard gene bank swalbard uh, global seed vault so take this at this is another issue uh, phytosanitary issues during post entry quarantine inspection only like we could uh, see the problem admixture of crop germplasm so this is finger millet germplasm imported from zimbabwe and we could see foxtail millet here you see entire accession is foxtail millet here barnyard millet so this is the problem where gene banks or uh, like they will have to be alert and then uh, they before sending the material they have to check the contents of it and since these uh, small millets are very difficult to differentiate plant quarantine officials they will not be able to distinguish during visual examination uh, because even wild germplasm also they receive so it will be difficult at that time the other uh, challenges as uh, uh, the ban ban pesticides like india is planning to ban uh, 27 pesticides already the draft notification has come up so this is this becomes a problem for the quarantine uh, people so this is one suggestion i am uh, mentioning like collaborative research should be carried out across the world for the alternatives to the banned fungicides and that are suitable to specific crops and pathogens because there are numerous number of crops and numerous number of pathogens and it would be very difficult to uh, carry out the uh, research at a single place or uh, at few places so uh, this is uh, the research should be uh, transparent transparent and in collaborative mode if uh, the work is carried out that uh, saves a lot of our time and alternatively uh, till alternatives are found quarantine stations should be given exemption from this uh, regulatory ban the this is another uh, challenge case of non compliance on technical requirements detected at the port of entry so there is a small problem and uh, but still uh, people have to be alert they are going to lose one planting season because of this because once the consignment reaches the uh, other country they uh, when it is held up with the customs and the uh, we will have to instruct them to destroy the destroy the material and also uh, the phytosanitary certificate has to be reissued in this process one planting season 
uh, they are going to miss. Another challenge is issue of non-compliance notices to the exporting countries without scientific basis. So even SPS agreement in the SPS agreement also you can see uh, without scientific justification one should not uh, uh, impose any restrictions on uh, trade or anything. Here uh, one such case we had experienced where uh, due to non-pathogenic endo uh, the presence of non-pathogenic endophytes and saprophytes the consignment the non-compliance notice was received by uh, one company. So this is actually Pantover dispersa is a growth promoting organism for paddy, which is an endophyte, and Flammonas oraizibitans is a saprophyte. So before uh, issuing the compliance notice, one should uh, be cautious because the, the relationship across the between the countries should not uh, get hampered. The, another problem is. Uh, we receive samples for proficiency testing also. Some companies like they uh, get the material for proficiency testing and certain guidelines are given by our uh, NDPGR uh, that the material should be received in duplicate, one of which would be used for quarantine testing at NDPGR and the second set would be released on an undertaking from the indenter. So if in case of a quarantine test is detected, both the sets would be destroyed. However, uh, there is a challenge that some, when the consignor has a problem in sending samples in duplicate, then again, we have to look for the alternative, what to do. The other uh, challenges are repeated introduction of accessions. This is another major issue because the gene banks, uh, the proper uh, database should be maintained and the repeated introduction, the, the resultant effect is the gene bank will be loaded with the duplicates, which is not uh, advisable. The import of multi-crop through single import permit. Uh, this is also a small error like uh, we, we have experienced recently, the multi-crop like uh, common bean, uh, lima, uh, lima bean and also cowpea were uh, uh, received with the single uh, import permit. So that is also some error and uh, the, before sending the material has to be checked thoroughly. And feedback from consignees. Uh, most of the consignees are uh, neglecting to give the feedback, which is not correct. Uh, because we have to, uh, as uh, uh, the NPPGR also should uh, come to know about the uh, status of the material that's uh, released. Then only like whether germination is hampered at our level or their level, everything will be possible to understand once feedback is received. Feedback on the performance of the actions also is important. The samples received for trial purpose. Here again uh, for uh, agronomic trials or multi-location trials, the phytosanitary problem arises because once the material is uh, sent to different locations, the original uh, material is being sent to different locations, then problem occurs, you will have to conduct inspection at three locations or four locations. And similarly, economic trials, like you receive uh, in bulk quantities and uh, without uh, the designated inspection authority should be able to conduct the post-entry quarantine inspection before uh, releasing it. Uh, some more challenges I have mentioned, uh, lack of uh, crop-wise list of quarantine pests and regulated non-quarantine pests for all the countries. This becomes a major issue, uh, though uh, in the import permit, uh, we don't see any additional declaration, but sometimes some pathogens which are uh, very common in, uh, in a particular country, maybe uh, they are quarantine pests in the other country. So uh, we have to take care of the uh, interests of other countries also before sending the material. So for that sake, like if uh, in these lists are, should be made available online through single window system, preferably on IPPC website. So the, the other one is diagnostic techniques and treatment protocols for specific pathogens should be made available online through single window system. Uh, this is also because research on prioritized pathogens in collaborative project mode is the only solution and uh, the transparency should be maintained because if they, uh, to develop diagnostic techniques, it takes a lot of time. The depletion of strength of experienced plant protection personnel, it's a common problem faced by many countries. So the 
training should be uh, part and parcel of our uh, routine uh, jobs. The globally renowned organization should uh, really come forward to provide training. Uh, this uh, my colleague Dr. Celia has uh, published a paper, wonderful paper, in which uh, she has mentioned about the uh, challenges in plant virus disease diagnosis. So these are also uh, important. Pest risk analysis is mandatory if you are uh, going to import uh, new commodity. And after uh, import also, the techniques have to be followed for which uh, you need to have uh, the different uh, protocols and uh, PCR-based uh, protocols are required. And uh, sample size, mostly for research purpose, sample we receive in very less quantities. So that becomes a hindrance for uh, effective uh, testing also. And for the detection of unknown or exotic virus, uh, again, antisera is a big problem and even sequences, uh, database is required on sequences of viruses and primers. There is an urgency normally for clearance of the sample, but uh, once you will have, you you grow the material in PEQ greenhouses. So some, for example, in case of legumes, you need to grow them for full uh, one season. And uh, so if there is an urgency, then it will be difficult. So non-destructive testing is very ideal. Only in groundnet, uh, one of our former colleagues, uh, lady Dr. Ardivijay Prasad Rao, sir, he has developed a technique for uh, detecting virus, the uh, peanut stripe virus and uh, the other seedborne viruses of groundnut in, by non-destructive seed ELISA. So such type of uh, techniques should be developed. Maintaining gene banks free from exotic viruses, this is also very important. And uh, this is, I think, final slide, a strategy for the future. These are all important upgradation of level of standards within each country, especially I am talking about India. The building up of uh, scientific evidence to counter unreasonable SPS measures. Suitable checkpoints while conserving the germplasm in the gene bank to tackle the issue of admixtures, lack of germination and health condition of seed. Examine uh, WTO compatibility of health and sanitary regulations and product, product standards. And there should be close coordination between the uh, persons, exporters, and also the government. There is a need for uh, framing standards for manufacturers also, production units, uh, monitoring uh, contaminants, sampling procedures, and entities. This is mainly for commercial consignments. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anita, for a very comprehensive and excellent presentation. Uh, I, I would like to acknowledge the help uh, taken from my colleagues, Dr. Uh, Prasanna Holajar and Dr. Uh, Parameshwari and also Dr. Abraham. So uh, my thanks to all of them. And thank you very much. As, uh, uh, we are running sh uh, short of time, so I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll move on to my next uh, presenter. Um, the next presentation from uh, Dr. Gurwach to Iri, so he is the GHU head at Iri. Yeah. So Guru, Guru has a PhD and, uh, in entomology from C, CSHU HR India and PhD, PhD diploma in intellectual property rights. Dr. Kulkarni has rich experience of working in bear crop science and Syngenta. In 2016, he joined Iri as head of research infrastructure and operation and has responsibilities such as transgenic stewardship, seed health unit, research infrastructure, research operations, research safety, and in 2020, additional responsibility of new initiative at ERI called Bio Innovation Center, director was given to him. So Guru will speak on safe exchange of rice germplasm by ERI seed health unit. Uh, Dr. Guru, 10 minutes, please, for your presentation. You are muted. Please. Hope I'm audible. Yes, please. Oh, sorry for that. And uh, 
thank you rajan uh, for the introduction and uh, 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 welcome to all the participants uh, uh, here in the online session as well as other uh, social media platforms uh, today i'll be giving a brief on the uh, safe exchanges of rice uh, germplasm through iri uh, my earlier speakers uh, whether they are from uh, cggghus or from the nppos have given a elaborate uh, explanation on the import export procedures and the challenges especially anita last presenter and also some most of these uh, procedures of import and exports are common uh, uh, in the interest of time i'll try to avoid the repetition and uh, however would like to give uh, the details specifics related to the uh, seed health unit at uh, iri so as you all uh, aware uh, the cg centers uh, are spread across the globe uh, with the mandate crops of uh, different uh, in terms of cereals pulses and other crops and uh, iri is uh, basically uh, headquartered at uh, philippines in terms of uh, taking care of the global rice research arena so why rice uh, rice is a important staple crop for most of the asians and also across the world and uh, rice uh, helps in terms of uh, the harvest from the 157 million hectares it supports basically the 27 million tons of fertilizers in terms of growing its uh, production and also in terms of irrigation water it covers uh, 440 kilometers uh, and also it's grown by 144 million uh, farm families around 25% of the world farm population Uh, i think these are the the few points that uh, help us uh, uh, to justify why we are in rice in terms of the research so just to give uh, some more points specific to philippines uh, i think rice accounts for the 20% of the overall uh, value move acreage of the philippine agriculture and also it employs 2.5 million households in terms of divided into uh, 20.1 million farmers 110000 workers and on terms of 320 from the ancillary activities so again rice accounts for 25% of the food expenditures of the poorest of 30% of the overall population and also 25% increase in the rice press translates into up to a 10% of the drop of the rural in, in poor uh, consumers i think this uh, gives us the importance of the rice in terms of uh, Uh, not only for the asia but also across the globe uh, coming back to the specific activities of uh, import and export of rice from uh, iri headquarter to different regions of the world uh, i think uh, this slide gives uh, that uh, information in terms of the hard work put by the uh, rice shu team uh, to send a safe movement of the rice germplasm for various activities and also in terms of uh, exports and import for different purposes of the research whether it is analysis destructive sampling or for the research uh, import exports so iri headquartered uh, spread at uh, las bonos in philippines uh, has a research buildings on the campus dedicated for different work but uh, this slide gives you the research buildings plus the screen houses and the other infrastructure spread across the campus coming specific to seed health unit seed health unit also occupies a part of the floor in one of the building at uh, iri headquarter uh, supporting the laboratory activities and other activities of seed health for import and exports so uh, as uh, as a seed health unit mandate I, uh, in iri it is a single gateway for all the incoming and outgoing rice so seeds grains and also the non uh, seed biological materials uh, that includes soil samples and the the other uh, materials related for the rice research so we have a special uh, understanding a memorandum of agreement uh, with the department of agriculture in philippines and bureau of plant industries uh, basically that uh, helps uh, the, the the faster actions in terms of uh, the testing that is required for the safe rice import and export and that particular agreement uh, gives a uh, seed health unit uh, a kind of uh, it deputizes in terms of conducting the uh, testings 
it helps in terms of the not only the conventional hybrids and uh, the varieties but also uh, in terms of testing for the transgenic materials and the non biological materials um, in terms of that again the uh, iri headquarter uh, the research fields also support in terms of uh, post entry quarantines i think some of my previous speakers have emphasized in terms of importing material how important is the pqs testing and analysis and uh, uh, for the new uh, avoiding a new introduction of the pests and pathogens into the importing country i think uh, that kind of an importance of pqs studies at the field I, I don't want to elaborate the germ, the ex import export procedures. I think uh, most of the speakers have uh, explained about the important export procedures. Uh, mostly it all depends on the importing country, particular crop, or pests of quarantine interest. Uh, I think uh, all uh, of the National Plant Protection Office as well as the uh, germplasm health unit work very closely with the respective crop and pests and pathogen in terms of documentation testing the seed sample for the safe uh, movement of the materials uh, to the importing country but uh, as uh, i think yesterday it was uh, highlighted uh, the whole purpose of the ghus in terms of safe material movement and uh, no intention of uh, introducing any of the new pests and pathogen into any part of the world uh, so the, with that basic mandate uh, we have a, a procedure laid out very very clearly in terms of documentation as well as the requirement and also the importantly working very closely with the BPAI officials or NPPO office in terms of documentation purpose requirement and also the importing country for the safe and timely movement of the seeds uh, and other uh, biological materials that is intended for the research. So same procedure for the, again, the export uh, that includes the uh, different uh, methods in terms of uh, procedures and documentation required uh, to export the materials uh, for the different purposes. It has its own, again, we have a set procedures and uh, SOP is set in the Institute, uh, work very closely with the breeding team as well as gene bank uh, for the safer and timely movement of the seeds. So some of the successes, uh, I think uh, Seed Health Unit got an award for best research support in 2017. Uh, we have a very good uh, coordination with uh, the local NPPO uh, based at Los Bonos as well as um, headquartered in Manila. We, we have basically periodical meetings uh, uh, with uh, our, the team of the experts from both the side in terms of uh, understanding the new developments as well as uh, the current happenings uh, in the field of phytosanitary certification. Uh, they were all very, very coordinatedly, transparently discussed and exchanged. Uh, and in terms of uh, capability, again, I think some of my earlier speaker mentioned that one of the key aspect of uh, seed health unit is capability enhancement for the developing country uh, who are in the process of developing the seed testing methods as well as the whole of the seed uh, uh, inspection um, and is producing our seed production aspects so in their country. I would like to quote uh, the Cambodia uh, team, uh, the agriculture minister visited the IRI headquarter and then later the delegation of the uh, agriculture officials, they came and took a two weeks training uh, to enhance their uh, uh, knowledge on the seed production, seed quality inspection, as well as the health testing. So same way for Myanmar and other developing countries, we are helping in terms of uh, trainings and uh, diagnostic uh, methods that are adopted or used in the uh, rice, uh, different pests and pathogens. Uh, I think uh, the another one, uh, quality management system, uh, the again, uh, the QMS as well as ISO standards, apart from the uh, global standards like ISTA are very well adopted in um, seed health unit at uh, IRI. And uh, also as a continuous process, we will be improving the procedures as well as the, the SOPs, COPs and work instructions for the betterment uh, in terms of the better efficiency and also the turnaround time uh, as, as it is very, very important that uh, the, the rice season coincides, uh, uh, everybody is coming rushing in terms of the movement to catch up the seasons. I think that peak period uh, of the year is uh, very, very important how we support the clients, basically our uh, breeding team and gene bank for the timely 
testing as well as the import export procedural support uh, and also uh, to do this to facilitate that we also trying to uh, adopt the advanced planning of the activities and efficiencies in terms of knowing in advance uh, how many quantities and which countries we are sending definitely helps to uh, allocate the resources uh, for the timely support for the uh, different uh, importing or exporting groups in the rice research. Uh, I think, uh, again, uh, in terms of the training and documentation required for import and export, uh, the Seed Health Unit always very well coordinate with the breeding team internally in the institute so that the right uh, documentation is submitted for the import and export requirements. So again, uh, my previous speaker, Dr. Anita has explained very, very elaborately on the challenges, but some of the challenges uh, I would like to focus internally into the, into the Institute. Uh, as I earlier mentioning the more sample, the congregation of the samples uh, in terms of uh, the season, that happens in the peaks of two uh, seasons in this in the seed health unit. Uh, basically, we want to avoid those last minute rushes. That's how we are trying to adopt uh, a remedial situation to uh, have a better planning for the researchers. And um, also we lack uh, one collaborative tool in terms of capturing the uh, material uh, testings uh, in, the, in the seed health unit. And we are trying to work with uh, breeding for rice it's a tool used by the breeders in the institute for mapping all their crossings and uh, material movements traits uh, trying to link that uh, with the uh, seed health testing and other uh, uh, methods so that uh, in the whole of the one uh, tool we'll be able to capture the the seed movements and as well as the different uh, diagnostic methods that are being followed in the uh, testing of the samples uh, in the seed health and uh, also we are trying to, when we are talking periodically with the researchers, we are proactively asking them what is coming up in the few months, next month, so that there will be a planned submission of samples and terms of uh, that will help uh, the seed health to allocate uh, uh, the resources properly in terms of uh, the priority uh, sample submissions and uh, movements. And also we are trying to support uh, the, the documentation uh, more comprehensively, more correctly that is required, especially in the, in the exports. Basically the importing country has a different requirement uh, for the quarantine pests of interest, as well as the other diagnostic methods. We would like to understand that very well in documentation requirements so that uh, it will be helpful in terms of the complete documentation. So we are working also the infrastructure enhancements uh, in terms of uh, uh, the capability enhancements as well in the seed health to address the peak uh, season uh, sample testing. So I don't, I will not be elaborately explaining the procedure. I think the procedures have been uh, explained earlier well, but I would like to highlight uh, uh, the RICE also follows the common testing principles like uh, seed uh, receptions and visual inspection, the routine seed health testing, whether it is a blotter test, nematode or uh, macro testing. And we also follow the seed treatment and san the sanitation as a necessary in terms of uh, fumigation, hot water treatment, especially for nematodes and slurry treatment and sodium hypochlorite treatments. And SMTA, the material transfer agreements, the standards and uh, specific uh, material transfer agreements are generated and attached as a procedural requirement for each uh, uh, consignment. And phytosanitary certification, again, uh, we have an understanding with the BEPI official who will be visiting once in a week uh, based on the requirement in terms of uh, uh, checking the testing procedures as well as the signatory that is required of the uh, certification procedures. And also packing, uh, some countries have their specific requirement for the packaging and dispatching. Uh, I think that is well taken care uh, in terms of the right packaging uh, protocols being followed uh, for the proper uh, dispatch uh, of the materials to the intended country. So as I was earlier mentioning, uh, IRI is uh, well, uh, Seed Health uh, well adopted uh, the ISTA standards in terms of the uh, seed uh, pro testing procedures and handling procedures. Uh, I think uh, we all agree that uh, seed movement is a complex subject and uh, it, it, that's how it uh, 
justifies the existence and testing methodologies and it is the continuous process of improvement that is required because of the recent experiences of uh, introduction as well, new introduction of new pests as well as the migration of the the major pests from one region to another region of the globe uh, i think some of these uh, are helping uh, us are giving us a challenge in terms of uh, uh, adopting a new methods of testing new methods of evaluations and uh, uh, more careful of in terms of the material movements uh, from one country to another country uh, in in the in the quarantine state uh, pest uh, testings etc and uh, also uh, the the always the we take help of uh, ista platform and other uh, platforms uh, to uh, develop the new uh, diagnostic procedures or testing methodologies uh, uh, to enhance some of these uh, standards with the existing procedures so that uh, we we meet that uh, the evolving challenges posed by the the pest and pathogen in terms of geographical movement and minor pest becoming a major etc so we are trying to enhance uh, the uh, capacity in terms of uh, enhancements for testing as well as uh, capability for the the procedures in terms of uh, new testing uh, methodologies uh, that includes pcr and elisa and uh, also uh, the the emphasis is uh, the minimizing the turnaround time for the sample testing especially as i was mentioning earlier on the peak seasons so th this is an example where uh, we map all the sops into a includes regulatory compliance intellectual property compliance or the information management systems and the testing diagnostics as well as the 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 germplasm treatment and sanitation procedures so this is uh, how uh, we are trying to map all the existing procedures as a result of that uh, last year 2019 we came up with uh, one procedure, the guideline and operational manual uh, that includes all the uh, procedural part and import export guidelines uh, as well as all the documentation required uh, for the import and export for rice to different intended countries uh, this is not only helpful for the researchers within the institute but also the consortium members whether it is a hybrid rice consortium direct seed rice consortium or the bio innovation center members all the mem the bilateral projects uh, that uh, clients or the members that are working with iri will all benefit from uh, these kind of uh, uh, existing procedures and standards that are being adopted for the seed health for the safe movement of the uh, seed uh, for the research purpose across the globe this was a launch time last year we launched it uh, in, you know with, this is a seed health unit team uh, and some of the initiatives again uh, as i was earlier explaining the cambodian agriculture minister with the delegation visited the uh, seed health unit and understood and he was uh, well impressed and then when he sent back uh, uh, when he uh, went back he sent a group of the agricultural inspectors uh, as the cambodian uh, government is implementing the new standard seed policy which includes the production inspection as well as testing methodologies uh, for the cambodia and also as i was earlier mentioning the the nppo office we very closely work with the nppo uh, officials uh, for the uh periodical time in terms of exchanging the the updates from both the sides uh in terms of uh, smooth uh, uh, functioning between the two organizations so again uh, the volom company uh, like uh, cambodian government delegation lot of uh, other private company uh, representatives uh, in this case it's a volom company from africa they visited iri and took a two weeks training on different aspects of um, rice growing production uh, testing uh, and other breeding aspects uh, of the rice and they were also trained one day in the seed health unit in terms of uh, diagnostic testing identification of pests and pathogens etc the field training is also very very important in terms of the the post entry quarantine as we discussed earlier again the field trainings and uh, on hand job trainings are given to the trainers so, so that they get well uh, understand and equip with the knowledge in terms of identifying the a major pests and minor pests uh, for the crop uh, also we are trying to update the the seed health brochure for the visitors so that uh, the seed health unit importance and seed health unit um, uh, 
the 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 overall establishment and procedures will give them a confidence that the material that is coming from the institute are safe as well as uh, from free from all the major pests and pathogens uh, in their country and uh, this is uh, the the example for that so coming back to this year covid situation it posed uh, as initially so far as mentioning good and bad things of covid uh, and it made us to learn so many new things made new ways of working new normal life i think some of um, uh, regular challenges that posed by this pandemic uh, includes uh, we are not uh, uh, going to our workplace to work we can, we are very restricted to go to the fields and uh, all these basically posed an institute working with a very minimum skeleton staff minimum research project at the headquarter and uh, also the bf the government officials uh, same situation working with the minimum staff the the uh, all the field trials uh, wherever possible were postponed relocated segregated uh, all all uh, these options explored uh, but uh, as situation improved uh, i think the some of more staff started working at the testing laboratories we are also same in uh, iri uh and also this uh, period gave us a kind of uh, time to think of our uh, new new methodologies or uh, what are the areas that we can improve uh, in terms of uh, documentation one of the initiative that is a docu sign it's a more digital signature uh, of the people in terms of the uh, material movement or the documentation uh, requirements so, so that uh, because of the signatures it's not getting delayed so docusign is used for uh, adopting this digital signature aspects and also the uh, basically the another one is the seat tracker initiative i think uh, the testing and timely to timely as per the season is very very crucial uh, to avoid a missing of the season by the imported or exported material uh, but uh, we cannot compromise as well uh, on the regulatory aspect so seat tracker helps to track the movement and dispatch of the material from one location to another location and uh, also we are trying to adopt new of some of these new methodologies in terms of uh, improving the the customer feedback uh, surveys and trying to work closely with the, the customer in terms of the areas where we can work uh, make it ourselves more efficient in the timely spending of the material so again there are some new steps or new uh, activities that still we need to work on that includes uh, basically closely monitoring the new pests and pathogens that are migrating from one region to another region and uh, my minor pest becoming a major pest and uh, in terms of all the, these uh, the testing methodologies how fast and how efficient we need to be uh, in terms of testing for the new pathogens minor becoming major all is being worked out in terms of uh, uh, the the efficiency so of course nppos are the final authority for the important exports uh, for any given country uh, we are uh, the supporting engine so working with nppos and uh, supporting them on the required area is the key for the success of uh, both the organization and also basically the regional coordination uh, can we uh, broadly agree uh, between the countries in the re in the region as a one method or one uh procedure in terms of uh, documentation requirement and declaring the quarantine pests of importance etc wherever possible uh, that will reduce the duplication of the work at each country uh, uh, is again another uh, another area where we try to simplify the the imported export procedures uh, uh, across the region or the areas of uh, common geographical spread in terms of soil texture crops grown as well as the pest status uh, that is also uh, being uh, we can think of the again uh, the international regulation compliance uh, in terms of uh, broader approvals in terms of and working very closely with the international organizations are the few of the uh, initiatives that we can keep live so that uh, we are all in the same page and we are working for the same mission and uh, across globally across the crops in terms of uh, uh safely exchanging the materials without introduction of any of the new pests in the in the given country thank you very much i would like to acknowledge the team 
of seed health unit at Erie, uh, who are putting uh, an efforts in terms of uh, testing as well as different procedures that are being adopted for the safe germ plasm exchange of rice across the globe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru, for the nice presentation and providing update on uh, ERI GHU. Uh, I request everyone to stay for another 30 minutes for the final presentation. Uh, our, our final presentation in the essay session is from Ms. Ellen Tendong Molon, who is Officer in charge Bureau of Plant Industry BPI, National Plant Quarantine Service Division, the Philippines. She is Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Major in Agronomy from University of Philippines, Los Vinos, and Master of Science in Agriculture with Major in Crop Protection. Ms. Ellen conducts pest risk analysis of imported products involved in the SPS related activities of MPQSD and design and facilitates capacity building activities of MPQSD. Title of Title of her presentation is Overview of the National Plant Quarantine Services Division. Ms. Ellen, please share the screen for your presentation. Okay, did you see the screen? Yes, yes, I could see. Yes. Please, okay. please go ahead. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will be presenting the overview of the National Plant Quarantine Services Division of the Bureau of Plant Industry, Philippines. So... So basically, the National Plant Quarantine Services Division of the Bureau of Plant Industry is the regulatory arm of the Philippine Department of Agriculture when it comes to matters of import, export, domestic movement, as well as market access of plants and plant products. So we are working or we are working under PD 1433 or the Plant Quarantine Law of 1978, which was signed on 1978. And we are mandated to prevent the introduction of foreign or exotic pests into the country, um, prevent further spread of pests already existing in the country, and of course, facilitate trade of plant products by complying with the phytosanitary requirements of importing countries. So basically, this is uh, import domestic and export activities. So um, the Philippines is a member of the International Plant Protection Organization and um, BPI or the Bureau of Plant Industry is the one recognized as the National Plant Protection Organization of the Philippines. We're in the director is the plant quarantine officer and the NPQSD division is the division which is performing the NPPO's function. So, uh, the NPQSD main office is located in Malate, Manila, uh, which have four sections, of course, import, export, domestic, and administrative section. <clears throat> and we also have uh, offices nationwide. Uh, we have 23 plant quarantine station, 12 substation with 47 international and domestic airports. 147 international and domestic seaports and 76 subports. So this is the organizational structure wherein we are headed by our chief and the uh, four sections and of course the regional and area managers all over the Philippines. So who we work with? So we are working with other member countries of the IPPC of course to establish the SPS measures and also we are working with the national, provincial, government, and local authorities, like the other agencies under the Department of Agriculture, the local government unit, and um, okay, the, the local government unit. And also, of course, we are working with the private sector, like the farmers, producers, traders, exporters, and importers. Uh, and um, um, this is uh, when, with regards to, we are working with exporters uh, if ever they are um, willing to export uh, plant products with other countries and also if we need uh, information with regards to SPS practices. And of course, the general public by encouraging them to do their responsibility in managing and protecting plant resources. 
So the functions of BPI and QQST is to promulgate and enforce planned quarantine rules and regulation, bilateral discussion or the market access. We do the request for market access with other countries, uh, conduct test risk analysis. So every commodity to be imported in the Philippines, we have to conduct first the PRA. Conduct of laboratory analysis for pest detection, especially for imported commodities. Commodity inspection and treatment. Post entry quarantine, which is located here in Los Banos, Laguna. Uh, licensing, registration of importers, exporters, growers, treatment facilities, and treatment providers. Pest surveillance, establishment of pest free areas. So we also issue these regulatory documents. First is the sanitary and phytosanitary import clearance or the plant quarantine clearance. So this document is issued prior to importation, which contains the import conditions that must be complied by the exporting country prior to shipment. So this is for import. And then we also issue the phytosanitary certificate for export. Um, for export of agricultural plant commodities, which certifies that the consignment is free from pests. And of course, the clearance for domestic transport, which we are going to transport commodities within the country, which certifies that the consignment is free from pests. So this uh, document may be just simple pieces of paper, but has a big impact. So this document may be uh, is issued to protect our plant health because a single pest can destroy an entire agricultural industry which may lead to food scarcity, hunger, and poverty. So, so this document is to protect our plant health. So what is plant health? So as have said earlier, uh, this year is declared as the International Year of Plant Health. So in the context of IYPH, plant health is defined as the discipline that uses a range of measures to control and prevent pests, weeds, and disease causing organisms from spreading into new areas, especially through human interactions such as international trade. So this had been mentioned also earlier. So 40% of food crops are lost to plant pests and diseases annually. So if there is an increase in international trade and travel, there is also an increase in risk that plant pests and diseases will spread. So that is how important is plant health. And um, in celebration of the International Year of Plant Health and, to, and also to create awareness on the importance of plant health, we have conducted several activities uh, with regards to IYPH 2020. So first, uh, last 2019, uh, we have conducted the BPI color run last January 2019, 2019. Uh, this, is, this is to launch the uh, IYPH 2020, and this is the first ever BPI color run um, to attract, uh, this attract uh, residents within the metro who registered for the BPI color run and also this is a good way to create awareness on the importance of plant health. Next we have conducted the BPI plant health summit so, and um, again this was the very first plant health summit at the Bureau of Plant Industry multi-purpose hall Malati Manila last November 26, 2019 with the team uh, protecting Plants, Protecting Life, which, which is also the theme of IYPH 2020 uh, as a way of promoting, of course, the IYPH. This is a two-day summit including exhibits featuring the mango pulp weevil in Palawan, banana panama disease in Mindanao, and the new pest detected, the whole arm worm. We have also displayed the biological control agents produced at BPI, which showcased the role of plant quarantine in protection of the Philippine agricultural plant industry. So aside from exhibits, uh, we have also conducted poster making contests that graphically represented the youth's perspective about the theme, protecting plants, protecting life. Seminars were also conducted to highlight the importance of plant quarantine and urban gardening. And lastly, we have uh, we have conducted the BPI Bubble Run 2020 last February 8, 2020 
at the University of the Philippines, the Science Laguna. Participants on this run uh, mainly students, policemen, and government officials. Uh, this consists of three K and five K runs. So we have conducted this at the different uh, different area to attract more private individual and um, to broaden our awareness campaign on the importance of plant health. And lastly, uh, we have conducted a seminar on awareness of plant health. Um, this awareness of plant health is a nationwide conduct awareness campaign through seminars in schools, local government units, farmers, cooperatives, and other stakeholders on plant health and its contribution to promoting sustainable agriculture, protecting the environment, and facilitating economic and trade development. Supposedly, this is to be conducted last June 2020, but due to this pandemic, um, we haven't forced it yet, um, especially uh, uh, in school since uh, there is no face-to-face -face school this year. So what we have done is uh, we, all, we have already conducted one webinar on uh, about plant quarantine and uh, hopefully uh, we have we can conduct another one. So that's all. Uh, this is our main office, and if you have questions, you can email at us here at pqsbpi@gmail.com or visit our website and our Facebook account. So thank you. Thank you, Miss Ellen, for your nice presentation. Uh, I'd like to welcome Dr. Jean Gerard, Director of Inter-African Phytosanitary Council to uh, Asia session. And I invite him for his name. Dr. Jean, please. Hello. Please unmute. He's on mute. Uh, Dr. Jean Gerard, please unmute. Dr. Gerard. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I apologize because uh, uh, I joined the meeting last, uh, just today. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, Dr. Labafuma asked me to present the uh, opening remark. Oh, that is, on, uh, that is on Thursday, Africa session. Is the African session? Yeah, that is on Thursday. That is on twelfth November. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. In November. Yes, that is day after tomorrow. Okay, eleven, eleven, not that, eleven of November. Uh, twelfth. It is Thursday. Coming Thursday. Thursday. Uh, yeah. Twelve. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. That I will come back to you. That. Uh, Thank you very much. I will come to you by 12. Yes, yes. I will send you again a reminder. And thanks also for joining the ACH session. Would you like to share any insights? No, 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 no. Just to, 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 to congratulate your organization to join the African Union. Because uh, I received the message, but we are we faced with uh, some internal problem. But anyway, I will prepare my opening remark for this uh, meeting. Yes. And, uh, I will organize a small meeting with my staff to present uh, our um, concern about the uh, germoplasm and the trombone pest. 
excellent. We are, we are very grateful. Thank you very much. See you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jin. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank all the speakers for very informative presentations. And now uh, over to Safa for closing remarks. Thank you very much uh, for all speakers for very nice presentation, for very nice overview or recent de and recent development and challenge uh, for the GHU. Uh, we we learn a lot today about the role of the GHU in ensuring the germoplasm germoplasm phytosanitary uh, safety. In addition, uh, uh, I can say how it's important the en engagement or the work in collaboration with our uh, MBBO and uh, other international. This is very important to work together, uh, CG centers, national and global phytosanitary com community to uh, prevent the spread of the CD quarantine uh, pest. And uh, uh, really, it's. Uh, I would like to thanks all for this uh, information, and for uh, especially for the from our MBBO uh, staff, uh, because without them we cannot uh, do anything. We cannot spread our uh, our seeds. We cannot receive any uh, shipment from outside. Many thanks for their help, uh, for their support. Uh, uh, for our uh, centers. And before we close, uh, I think if uh, there is any questions from the participant, we have only four minutes. If anybody, because we receive a few uh, questions through chat and um, I think all of them they already answered, but if any questions are not answered or somebody uh, would like to raise any question now, still we can give you one minute or two minutes. I'm very happy to see this number this morning because I think uh, more than 60 participants, they join us, maybe more, because the number of the participants uh, over 50 all the time, some uh, participants join, others left, but still the numbers is high, over 50. Or on the or YouTube, we have around 16, 17 participants, which is excellent uh, number. Uh, I'm happy to see this. If anybody have the questions, it seems everything's clear for the participant. Lava, would you like to add anything? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Safa. I appreciate all the speakers. I mean, fantastic presentations, very rich in detail, very clearly explained the process that uh, is taken within the GHUs to ensure the seed are healthy and also the linkages between the national quarantine authorities and the role, the vital role they play in supporting the CG mission. This is fantastic. So I congratulate all the presenters and also thank our national program partners for excellent support they are giving to CG programs. Um, without your support, we were not able to deliver what we have been delivering all this year. So we count on your support in the future as well. And we'll be very happy to listen and learn and walk along with you to make sure that we are together in this process of delivering safe and clean seed without pests and diseases. And uh, I just take opportunity to again to invite all the participants to tomorrow's session, which is on the Latin America, which is focused on the Latin American issues, uh, which is a bit late in the day because they are doing it in the morning of the Latin American time. So, so this session is going to be delivered by the speakers from SIP. CIMET and SIAT, which are based in Mexico, Colombia, and Peru. So please do join to understand a bit more about what is happening in the Latin America. On Thursday, the issues will be focused on Africa, and the timing for that is also different. It's all available in the notice that has been circulated. Please do join. Thank you very much. OK. Really, it was uh, a wonderful day. Uh, well spent listening to the great speakers. A great day to at least to uh, wake up from our, just to leave the 
Corona or COVID-19 a little bit and uh, uh, back to our normal uh, life because we miss this activity a lot during the last few, uh, few months. Uh, really, I enjoy this activity and hoping to get uh, more such oppor opportunity in the future. And people will join uh, Latin America Day and Africa Day and uh, Many thanks for all uh, participants, speakers, and have a nice day, evening, and morning based on your uh, located place. Uh, and see you, inshallah, soon. Okay, Rajan, this uh, floor back to you. Thank you, Safa, for the nice words. Last one minute. Thank you very much. Yeah, once again, I thank all the participants for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, well Bye -bye. done, Rajan. Well, well done, Rajan. Bye -bye. Thank very you. good. Very good organization. Thank you very much.